Okay, so I wanted to make a video um, because this is a question that I had and played um, a bunch of scenarios through my mind on what would be the best option. And that would be um, you want to buy your son, daughter, um, maybe wife, a, a gun. And uh, it's like a starter gun, like a training gun, you know, like my first, first gun, like maybe your son's uh, first rifle. And you'll see those little tiny cricket bolt action single shot 22s um, in your local sporting goods store. And um, I would suggest staying away from those because that little small rifle will not grow with your kid. Um, they might shoot that for a little bit, but they will quickly outgrow that and that little single shot will become obsolete. So um, what I suggest is when they're young, about four or five or so, um, get them a BB gun. And, uh, you know, of course, only use these under parental, direct parental supervision. Um, these are good to kind of teach them basic weapons handling, safe firearms handling, um, keeping your fingers straight, and things like that. And what's good about this daisy with the wooden stock is, is you can cut the stock down so the, your kid can get a good length of pull so they can actually acquire a sight picture. Uh, most BB guns still have like an adult, like regular man size um, stock. So the length of pull is too long and they can't get a good cheek weld and can never really see their sights and practice that part of shooting. The only bad part about this is the gun is very front heavy. So that's gonna require them to use some type of uh, bench rest or uh, a deck railing, kind of brace the gun on something. Um, another thing you can do to prevent this a little angle back on the stock and maybe put some skateboard tape or something tacky there to help it, help it kind of catch their shoulder so they're not fighting their way to that gun and they can actually focus on um, you know shooting the target and having a good time. All right so after you get past that and uh, this isn't really for hunting although I guess you can do some hunting with this um, the one that I have slung here but um for hunting, I would say probably something like a 20 gauge semi-auto, something they can shoot bird shot, um, foster slugs, uh, buck shot, and uh, a 20 gauge uh, can really grow with your kid probably up until they're like 16 or 18, and even still would be a, a very good hunting gun until then. But something for student, um, for like a uh, like training, um, recreation. Um, you know, just like a fun gun, um, I would suggest something like this. And uh, you kind of need to get, get past all the like military features or whatever and about this being like a scary gun um, because this offers a lot of advantages that other um, 22s don't offer. Uh, one of the biggest being the adjustable butt stock. This is a really big deal because this will allow your kid to get a good length of pull, go to get cheek weld, so they can actually use the gun. It makes the gun a lot more usable. And when they get bigger, or however they decide to shoot, um, it's adjustable. That's a huge point about this. You know, if you don't want 30 round mags, or you're gonna be shooting bench rest, they make like 10 round mags for these. Also, these magazines are very easy to load. They have these little nubs here, you can pull down and load the shells in. Um, something like a uh, 1022, those mags are a little harder to load, and that can kind of make things a little bit less enjoyable, especially if you want to shoot a lot. So, uh, the other thing is the rail on top. Um, and what I suggest starting them on is some type of red dot. Um, you can get something budget or put something else you got on there. And these came with these uh, fixed sights, but uh, if you're going to go like a powered optic, um, I would say either take the sights off or get some flip-ups. But um, this is also pretty versatile because you can go from something like a red dot to a uh, like a three by nine or a primary arms makes a dedicated um, 22 scope that has a bullet drop compensator. So you sight it in at like 50 or 25 or 100, whatever it is, and it has bullet drops so you can do your holdovers out so whatever the range is on that scope, that's a primary arms um, primary arm scope, and um, 
maybe about the same price as the rifle, but if you're going to be shooting out past 100 yards, uh, 22s kind of drop a lot, so that would probably be a good investment. And uh, the next thing I would look at putting on here, and the, the Mixus, useful. Um, I think the newer, um, the newer ones come with a uh, M lock rail, so you would have to get the M lock adapter versus the Picatinny. Um, the next thing is having a bipod, and having a bipod on a rifle, um, training a young shooter, um, that is a really good addition. Uh, what this allows you to do is bench rest the rifle or have them lay down in the prime. That way they don't have to hold the gun up, they're not fighting the weight of the gun, and you don't have to worry about them swinging back and forth, muzzling you or muzzling you in the face or kind of doing something unsafe. This gives you kind of a more controlled environment. So um, I took a kid out shooting for the first time. I took mine shooting at five, and uh, he did really good and had, had good results. Um, I skipped the iron sights. It's complicated, and I want the kid to hit stuff and uh, have a good time. So uh, get your length of pull set up so they can get a good sheet weld. Um, a red dot, super simple. Uh, get your bipod. You can get some socks or something um, to prop up the buttstock. Have it really close so you're not making them do a lot of work, um, for, especially their first couple times till they get used to this and comfortable. So uh, I think that's probably the safest way, uh, most, most efficient, is to have something just like this. All right, getting past that. Let's see. As far as um, after they're comfortable with this gun and um, you know they get a little bit older then this gun is still useful um, and uh, haven't said it yet but what this gun is is a Smith & Wesson MNP 1522 it is a 22 long rifle um, like AR style gun and uh, a lot of people use these for training rifles um, I think it's good for that. Uh, this is one of the few, uh, I'm not sure about any new recent additions to the 22 market, but this one actually has a bolt hold open. So you can use your bolt release and um, get used to doing that, you know, practice that muscle memory. Some guns that are molded, they're like a, like a metal aluminum type of receivers. They don't have functional um, bolt releases or last round bolt hold opens. But this is useful for a training gun, and um, I use this to take out um, predators um, harassing my chickens. So I actually still use this, and um, this is a fun gun to shoot. Uh, 22 ammo is pretty inexpensive, and this is definitely something that I probably will never get rid of. All right, let's see what else. Oh. Um, now, the one, one flaw with blowback op operation um, type ARs or you know, different types of guns. So this is blowback, it doesn't have any locking lugs. So uh, some of these, I don't know if this is still the case with the recent productions, but there's no locking lugs that locks us into the chamber. So there's a potential to be able to drop the hammer on the firing pin and have that strike the round and cause an out of battery. Um, so that is possible with these. Um, I'm not sure about the recent productions, but that is one type safety thing that could be a deal breaker for you, but um, I haven't had one of those or experienced one, but that is a possibility. Okay, so uh, this is a solid buffer tube, so I added a Midwest Industries uh, sling adapter. I try to keep it close to what I carry. You see the side has the bolt release magazines. And uh, that's pretty much all I got. So if you're considering um, buying a rifle for your son or your daughter for their first um, gun for like a sporting recreation uh, training rifle. 
I would say get something like this, um, Smith & Wesson NMP 1522. Uh, I'm pretty sure that um, Palmetto State Armory had these with the MLOC rail for $2.99, I think with free shipping. I think I paid $3.29 for this, but that was kind of when they were new on the market. And I actually got a really good deal this at the time. They were selling for a lot more than that. All right, uh, one little thing I want to throw in here at the end. I was thinking about getting my kid first, um, getting, getting my kid his first pocket knife. So I got one of these case um, side busters. Or this may be a side buster junior. You know, something kind of non-threatening. Um, I thought it might be, you know, a little safer. When I got it, um, this blade, you kind of have to open it with your fingernail. It's really stiff. And it has, doesn't really have a lock. And I don't like this because watch this push down on it, it will spring shut. So they get their little digits caught in there. It's pretty sharp. So when you're looking at a first knife, uh, maybe you look at something easier to open, something that might have a, a safety lock on it, and of course, you know, use this stuff with um, parental supervision. All right, uh, that's all I got. Hope this was helpful. And again, um, I know that uh, I think James Yeager made a video on pretty much the exact same um, subject. So if you want to go over and check his video out, um, I suggest doing that. Oh, also on here, um, this is like a little Magpul, um, what is it, Grail sling attachment. But they're like, uh, I think, 19 to 29 probably 19 bucks you get these um, this is a little 22 so uh, you really don't need to spend that you can get these for like nine dollars on eBay and while I, while I don't like buying copies um, this rifle um, doesn't really rate a uh, Magpul part for that I mean you could just use a piece of 550 cord like I did for a while and tie it around here but um, also is a light gun it's not quite as heavy um, if you are using this for a trainer rifle um, you just got to realize you're not going to get the recoil impulse you're not going to get the weight of a real AR-15 so you're not going to get that um, like kind of 100% real type train training feeling and uh, it won't really help you train with recoil mitigation and stuff like that so just be aware of that but um, another thing that I think these would fit a good role for is something like, say you have a grandparent that doesn't have a ton of firearms experience, but they want a home defense gun, uh, some type of rifle, um, something that they will be able to shoot accurately and actually use, something usable. Now most old ladies aren't going to be great with a 38 Special snub nose. Um, those things, triggers are a long hard trigger pull, um, that's tough. It's um, not going to be easy for somebody older to pull. The recoil is going to be hard to control. Um, something like this with maybe a little tape switch or a light on it, or just like this. They can hold up easy. They have 30 rounds, which um, this gun enough is a pretty good, I guess, deterrent if somebody were to see it and not know if it's real or not. But um, well, this may not be a first choice for a home defense gun for somebody smaller stature, uh, recoil sensitive. Um, stuff like that this may be a really good option so uh, that's all I got I hope this was helpful and uh, have a good night and be safe and uh, always um, with your kids around guns make sure they are supervised direct supervision I don't mean tell them to be safe and go out in the woods and have fun kind of like like I did when I was younger but they really need to have a good understanding um, before they start handling uh, weapons they need to be supervised um, that's all I got